Hi, my name is Dr. Zach Allman. I'm the owner of Monon Family Dental in Indianapolis, Indiana, and the co-founder and CEO of Apex Payment Solutions. I'm really excited to be part of the team at Dentsply Serona to present to you the Practice Recovery Barometer. Because let's face it, we're in unprecedented times. There's so much uncertainty revolving around our practices, from infection control to PPE to staffing to bringing patients back into the door. And I don't have the answers. The only way that I'm going to be able to recover is to gather information and come up with a plan that is best suited for my individual practice. And that's exactly what the practice recovery barometer is meant to do. It helps us get real-time data on patient mobility and using that data to determine our best move forward strategy. How are we going to respond to patient needs? How are we going to ramp up our clinical hours and make sure that we're there and able to take care of the patients? What I want to do is I want to first kind of take us through my score. What's, what are things looking like in my area? How are patients mobilizing? And what does this tool mean? So what we're looking at is our practice recovery barometer. And what the practice recovery barometer does is using a blend of consumer data with mobility data from Apple and Google. And there it's a predictive model that predicts patient mobility which means how likely are patients going to be to come to the practice? How active are patients in seeking out dental care? Are they in a recovery mode where they are really just hunkered down, isolate and stay inside? Are they in a more mobile position where they're trying to get back to their normal routines and daily lives? Based off of that score, our approach to these patients is going to differ. So let's go ahead and dive right in with taking a look at my individual score. So when we get to the practice recovery barometer, we're going to fill in some information. I'm going to include my first and last name, then an email address that I can be reached at. And I'm going to input my zip code, which is 46240, which is for Indianapolis. And when we click the submit button, and it gives me the score. So what we're seeing here, my score is partial mobility. So we're, we're in the yellow zone. And this is really interesting, actually, because when I took a look at this last week, when we were testing this out, I was in the green. Our area was in full mobility. And those trends were actually reflected in my practice. We were fully booked out on the doctor's side. We had patients on waiting lists on a short call list to get in for treatment. We were kind of busting at the seams. But now, today, that score has changed to partial mobility which is reflective of what's going on within the media and what, what things are telling us. Cases are surging again, and in Indianapolis, mask wear is mandatory uh, for all public places, and we're starting to see a slowdown in the individuals uh, that are inquiring about dental care. More specifically, what we're seeing is more inquiries into our infection control protocols. Because of this shift in my score, I'm going to change my approach to how we are going to move forward. And I'm going to keep a constant monitoring of my score to help me move forward. And so looking at my score, I'm in partial mobility. When we're looking at the national average over here, my area is actually worse off than the national average. For the majority of the country, they are in full mobility. But what we're also looking at in the recovery status state, this is the kind of statewide for Indiana, my score is actually lower than the, than the local score for my state. So we're kind of not really in panic mode, but what we're looking at is, okay, we need to take a pause and reassess how we are handling business. How am I going to communicate this to my patients? One of the things that I've hated most throughout this process is that I always seem to get canned responses from companies that I'm working with. It, it's almost like a cookie cutter response. And I want to, at all times, be authentic with my patients and with my staff. So I want to make sure that I'm using the data that I'm receiving to customize and tailor my response. So because of my score with a partial mobility, I'm going to use our patient communication tools uh, 
through via emails and texts to kind of keep my patients updated on how things are changing in my practice. And I'm going to relate that to the current status or situation that we are in in our local area. If our status changes next week to, let's say, limited mobility, my response and communication to my patients is also going to change. But that we're also going to use this score to tailor our, our verbiage in office. How are we answering the phones? How are we talking chair side? I'm going to take this score to my morning huddles and communicate that to my, to my team. Team, this is our mobility is going down, meaning fewer patients are willing to come out and, and seek out service. So how are we going to talk to our patients this week? How does that differ from the weeks before? In order to use this score to its fullest potential, we're also going to look at our preferred practice recovery resources. When we are looking at these practice recovery resources, I'm going to first look at the clinical accelerator and the practice protect resources. Now these different areas will differ based off of your score. And you can use this score to then reach out to book an online consultation with a Densefly Serona rep. And that online consultation will help you to implement your recovery strategy. How am I going to implement those into my practice? And what tools and resources do I wanna pick and choose from? So when we look at the clinical accelerator course, that's something that will help you to implement new procedures and techniques into your office but also give you, let's call it an incentivized way of using, of, of beginning new procedures. There's equipment bundles, there's discounts towards training courses to help you become more comfortable with the procedures that you wanna begin offering. But what I'm really ex excited for and really interested in specifically for my practice, especially in this partial mobility phase, is looking at the practice protect resources. How am I going to protect the practice that I've already built to put us into a position to grow once we get through this phase? So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to book an online consultation with a consultant who can help me to tailor my response based off my individualized score. The thing that I'm most excited about this is that it's not a canned response. This is not just a cookie cutter, oh, here, we need to implement Seraph into your office. Have you looked at doing 3D imaging? What they're going to do is they're going to take the information based off of your mobility scores and help you with a grow forward strategy. They're going to take the information based off of your mobility scores and help you develop your personalized grow forward strategy for your office. Now you can schedule this consultation for any of these services that Densefly Serona offers. From prime scan digital impressions, one day dentistry with Sarek, looking at 3D and 2D di digital imaging. The thing that I'm most interested in and excited for for my practice is investigating the SureSmile system, potentially making a transition from the Invisalign model to the SureSmile system so that way I can implement a unified workflow utilizing my prime scan. But the most interesting and exciting thing for me is going to be the healthy practice program. How are we going to accelerate our own recovery? What am I going to do to get back to what I would like to consider my normal or even establish a new normal? By reaching out for a cons consultation into the healthy practice program, this is going to be like more the 30,000 foot view or the holistic view of your practice. How do we create an environment that allows you to one, practice comfortably, two, allow your staff to take care of the patients comfortably and give your patients the reassurances that you are looking out for their well-being, their safety and their health and wrapping that up into a nicely presented model. So let's take a look at how this looks for different areas in the country. But what if we were to take a look at say, let's say New York. We're gonna look in Sullivan County in New York. So when we look at Sullivan County in New York, they have very limited mobility. What's this tell us? Well, how would, how would my practice change or how would my approach to my recovery change? Well, I'd be in survival mode, not only from a healthcare perspective, but also from, 
from the health of my business? What can I do when my patients might be less willing to come in to see me for care? How can I improve their experience or increase their confidence that we are treating them in a safe manner? Well, the first thing, making sure that our PPE procedures are in place. Do we have the proper protective measures, both for the patients and the team members, that will allow us to provide excellent clinical dentistry? Secondly, how am I communicating that to my patients? Are you using a patient communication tool? Are you using the right patient communication tool for your practice? There are so many different options out there. You might want to take this opportunity to look at a, a new system or even implementing a system. One of the things that, that, that we've been looking at, even in Indiana where I am, is I'm looking at making a transition from my current patient communication system to a product called uh, Modento. It's a more robust platform that allows you to engage with the, with the patients in a more real and in more robust ways. So if we have limited mobility with a lower patient volume, this might be the perfect time to dedicate a couple hours to either do a demo of that platform or to bring the team in on that decision-making process. Because if you improve that process and can then tailor your communications with your patients, that's going to increase their confidence in the care that you're providing and make them more comfortable coming to see you. Now, looking at this from a consultation perspective, I might be less focused on implementing new procedures, but more focused on improving the procedures that I have in place. Still taking a look at that healthy practice program, getting that assistance in that holistic manner, taking the big picture, making sure that the message that you are wanting to present to your patients is done so in the most effective manner. But definitely taking a look at infection control, infection prevention. Is this the time to maybe utilize this downtime to look at an office redesign or, or updating some equipment? You know, the, the, the opportunities are endless, but the only way you're going to get the best picture for your, for your individual practice is to have somebody take a look at it from the outside. Help you with an outside set of eyes to kind of look at that big picture for your practice. And then if we take a look at, let's take a look at a high mobility or just take a look at a different area of the country. We're going to take a look at in Ohio. So right now they're at a full mobility state. Now they're not completely in the green, but they are in a green condition right now. So how is that going to change? Well, what this might tell you as a clinician is we might need to recover with staff more completely. We might need to add an assistant, add hygiene hours make patient care more available because the patients are there, they are wanting to seek care, they are mobile, is your team in a position to help those patients? I know from my practice, when we were in the green, and I still have that mindset, we added hygiene days uh, through a part-time hygienist to try and recapture those hygiene appointments that we had lost. And working with those patients uh, to make sure that they understand their insurance benefits. Do they have access to two hygiene therapy appointments a year, or is it one every six months? Because this throws off the timeline for a lot of those patients. And so if their insurance allows them to, allows them access to two appointments a year that are included uh, in their preventive plan, if we aren't planning for that and planning to get them in before the end of the year, then they're losing out on that benefit and they could be upset actually with your office for not making them aware of that as part of their insurance. And we all know that, you know, yes, insurance is a benefit for the patients. It's not necessarily our responsibility to be on top of their plans for each individual, but it's something that dental practices have done and it's become an expectation from the patients. So we need to make sure that we are assisting our patients in every way possible, making sure that there are spots for those patients to get in. We're actually in the process of adding an additional assistant that will be able to assist both the hygienists and the doctors to allow us to provide an accelerated hygiene schedule because we have the chairs available in our practice, but we wanna make sure that we are properly allowing for the time for our new infection control protocols. So we are seeing patients and then allowing those rooms to sit and be disinfected by the hygiene assistant. So Almost counterintuitively, we've added team members in this time of recovery to allow more access to care. 
and to allow us to return to a more profitable schedule. So when you're looking at this from a full mobility perspective, is this the time to add team members? Is this the time to add equipment that allows you to provide more efficient dentistry, more efficient same day appointments, and more efficient care within your office? So what I've actually learned from using this tool is that it's an ever-changing model. Patient mobility changes from day to day, from week to week. And my response to that, those changes within the model or within the patient mobility needs to change at the same time and at the same pace. If this pandemic has taught us anything is that there are too many unknowns out there. And that's, that's honestly been my biggest stress through this whole time. There are so many unknowns that we can't plan for everything. And as clinicians and business owners, we need to be able to plan and strategize out as much as possible to provide consistency for our teams and our patients. The practice recovery tool is giving us more information in real time to allow us to customize that plan that we have for our offices. And by staying on top of that score and having that real time data, we are able to pivot more frequently, more responsibly, which allows us to become more efficient in our recovery model. By becoming more efficient in our recovery, we are allowing ourselves to have the healthiest practices possible, and it's creating the opportunity for us to grow and move in the right direction.